Okay, so let's talk about GED math. Now, because you're watching this video, I am assuming that you are preparing and you definitely want to take and pass the GED, and that is fantastic because passing your GED is going to open up a lot of future opportunities for you. Now, I'm actually posting this video at the end of 2023, and a lot of you out there may have wanted to take and pass the GED this year, but you just didn't get around to it. So no big deal because the best time to start uh, working towards your goals is right now. And 2024 is right around the corner, but you really have to be fully ready for GED math. I think a lot of people are surprised with how much math is actually on the GED. There is a lot of high school level algebra and geometry and the math is more difficult than, again, most people think. And a lot of people, uh, unfortunately, the majority of people who take the GED are underprepared in terms of the math section. But uh, let's go ahead and take a look what I have for you in this video. I have a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty easily if you are fully prepared for the GED. Let's go ahead and take a look at the problem. It is evaluate this expression. So this is the expression. It is parentheses. 4xy plus y minus 8x, uh, in parentheses, divided by xy. And we want to evaluate this expression for the values x equals 1 and y is equal to negative 2. Okay, so feel free to use a calculator, but if you could do this without a calculator, that's even better. Go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll share the correct answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to fully explain how to do this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. But I'm also the founder of TC Math Academy. And on my site, I have complete, full, comprehensive math courses. And one of my most popular uh, test prep courses is my GED math prep course. I have had a lot of people successfully use this course. It is an extremely comprehensive math course. And the great thing about this course is you can be uh, you could have you know been away from math or you you know currently let's say the last time you looked at any math has been 15 20 30 years ago you could still take this course because I start off with basic mathematics and then I build your math skills up into algebra geometry and other topics that you need to understand to be fully prepared for the GED so if you want to check out this course okay because you definitely don't want to just try to just use a study guide and or a study book to learn math. Now, those are good to kind of do math problems, but the best way to learn math is from a math teacher. So I'm gonna leave a link to my GED math prep uh, course if you wanna check it out in the description below. But let's go ahead and get into this problem here. So here's the question, and we're going to evaluate this expression for these values. So what does it mean to evaluate? Well, first of all, let's just kind of look at this word, an expression. What's an expression? Well, in mathematics, this thing right here is expressing something. Now, if this was like a uh, English problem, uh, you express things by writing uh, sentences, right? We use words to write sentences to form paragraphs where we are expressing thoughts and ideas. Now, in algebra, we use numbers and variables to express uh, things, and that's what an expression is in mathematics. Now, this word right here, evaluate, means that we're going to replace these variables, x and y, we could see the um, um, uh, in here throughout this expression, we're going to replace these respective variables with these values, okay? So we're going to let x equals 1 and y equals negative 2. So we're going to replace all these variables with these uh, respective values, and then this is be going to become a numeric expression, and then we're going to simplify that uh, numeric expression step by step. So that's how you, uh, I'm going to do this problem. I just wanted to kind of explain this because some of you may not uh, understand what's going on here, but if you want to now try this, that's great. Just pause the video and do this work and put your answer into the comment section. But let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. The correct answer for this problem is 36. Okay, now if you got this right, that is fantastic. Very, very good, And but um, I don't want you to get, let's say, overconfident. It's a good indicator that you understand basic algebra, but there is a lot more that you need to know to be fully ready for the GED, but you know, I don't want to take away from your success, okay? Because if you did this right, that is great. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So we have 4xy 
plus y minus 8x divided by xy. So when we see an x here in this expression, we're going to replace it with a 1. And when we see y's here, we're going to replace that uh, the y's with negative 2. And anytime we, uh, we replace a number for a variable, you want to use parentheses. And it got to be very, very neat and structured and organized when you do mathematics. Okay, so just take it one step at a time. So that's effectively what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and do this right now. Okay, so we just have to be very careful here. So we have 4xy. Now, let me go ahead and actually explain what this is, 4xy, because some of you may not understand what this means. In algebra, when we have a number and a variable just kind of written all next to one another, this means multiplication. So this means 4 times x times y. We don't use the multiplication operator like, say, 3 times 2 or 3 times 2. We don't really use these uh, uh, notation or this notation to express multiplication in algebra. So 4xy means 4 times x times y, just to be clear. So right here, 8x means 8 times x, and xy means x times y. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and plug in these values, and we're just going to be very careful. And when we do this again, we're going to use parentheses. So anytime you replace a variable with a number, uh, you want to use parentheses. There's a lot of reasons uh, for that. I'm not going to get into them uh, right now because I want to get into this problem. Okay, so 4xy, so x is 1, and y is equal to negative 2. So that's going to be 4 times 1 times negative 2. So the first thing we're going to do is just start plugging in these values plus y. y is negative 2, so we'll plug a negative 2 right there. Minus, okay, 8x or 8 times x. And x, of course, is 1, so that's 8 times 1. And this is in parentheses divided by xy, which will be uh, 1 times negative 2. And, of course, we have all this in parentheses. Okay, so we uh, basically um, we plugged in the values. And we're evaluating this expression. And now at this point, we have to use our basic math skills to simplify this problem. So let's go ahead and get into it right now. And it's important that you understand something called the order of operations. Now, the order of operations is kind of, there's a basically a checklist for it. It's called PEMDAS. And this is a big topic uh, in and of itself. And, uh, you know, this problem that I'm doing it in this video is just kind of a check for understanding. It's not designed to be full course instruction. So if you're lost on anything, don't get discouraged. Just make kind of a note and just say, okay, hey, look, I got to work on order of operations or whatever the case is. And that's why you really want to have a kind of formal organized course of instruction that builds up your math skills one step at a time. But we need to be thinking about the order of operations and the order of operations. Again, let me just put this up here. PEMDAS. Uh, basically says, okay, uh, we have all these numbers and various math operations. We have multiplication, addition, subtraction, and division. What do we do first? Well, we have to go inside of the parentheses first. And of course, here are our parentheses. So let's concentrate inside of here first. All right. Now, in here, I have addition and subtraction and multiplication. So what, I'm what am I going to do first? Well, I'm going to do multiplication because that's what I see first from left to right. Now, I'm quickly going through this problem. And uh, again, if you, um, you know, are lost, if you want me to do more explanation, uh, believe me, I love teaching math, uh, but I can make this video way too long to try to, you know, teach these concepts. I'm just kind of highlighting the things you need to know. But let's go ahead and get into it. So we have 4 times 1 times negative 2. Now, uh, as I indicated, uh, you know, you could use a calculator here, but you know, it's better for you not to use a calculator because I want to kind of see if you understand the rules for positive and negative numbers. So here we have a positive 4 times positive 1. That's positive 4 because a positive times a positive is positive. So that's going to be a positive 4 times negative 2. A positive times a negative is a negative. So this is negative 8. Okay, so plus negative 2 minus 8 minus 1. Okay, so at this point, uh, let's go ahead and handle this. This is multiplication, 8 times 1, pretty straightforward. So that is going to be 8. So we have negative 8 plus a negative 2. And this negative 8 right here, we can express as a uh, plus negative. Okay, that's the same thing as a plus negative. In other words, we need to recognize this is this right here, this minus 8, is actually a negative number. Okay, so we're not done yet. 
uh, working inside of the parentheses, so we have negative 8 plus negative 2 plus negative 8. So negative 8 and negative 8, when we add this up, that's negative 16 plus negative 2 is a total of negative 18. Okay, so now we are done working inside of uh, these parentheses. So let's go ahead and handle this part of the problem, which is 1 times negative 2. All right, now uh, some of you out there might be thinking, well, you know what, should we uh, do this, right? You know, I kind of said, let's go ahead and do this. And, you know, it just seems so tempting to actually go 1 times negative 2. Now, in this particular problem, you could do this and, you know, not, you know, uh, get the problem wrong. But that's because we have 1 right here. But in PEMDAS, this order of operations, this would be a critical mistake because a very common error in the order of operations is uh, but, uh, when we follow this, uh, most students, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, again, just kind of use this as feedback to uh, learn and fully understand the order of operations. But here, parentheses means we have to do all the parentheses. E stands for exponents or powers. We don't have any powers, things like 2 to the 4th power. But this MD part right here, this is multiplication or division. And a lot of people think that, oh, I have to do multiplication first, always before division. That's not the case, okay? We do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. So here I have division, here I have multiplication, right? So we have a number, we have division, and this is actually right here. This is multiplication right there. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're going to do whatever we see first, multiplication or division from left to right. So that means we'll do the division. But it's very tempting to do the multiplication. And again, if you did the multiplication, you wouldn't have got this wrong because here we have negative 18 divided by a positive 1 is uh, uh, nothing more than just negative 18. Okay, now I could have taken this 1 and multiplied by negative 2 and it would have worked out the same way. But if this was another number, uh, you would have gotten this wrong. So you got to pay attention to these little details. Again, in basic math, you know, I think that's a misnomer where people say, I need to understand basic math. Well, basic math is not so basic, okay? There's a lot of years of instruction that is required. So don't feel bad about uh, any of this stuff if you don't remember it or if you don't even know what's going on, okay? But you can definitely learn it all. Okay, so 18 divided by... Uh, negative 18 divided by a positive 1 and negative divided by negative divided by a positive is a negative. So we have negative 18 times now this negative 2. A negative times a negative is positive. So we have negative 18 times a negative 2 is positive 36. Okay, so hopefully uh, you understand what's going on here. Now, if you didn't get this right and if you're still confused, do not get discouraged. That's not the point of this video. The point of this video is to get you fully ready for GED mathematics. And you're going to need a lot of instruction. You're going to have to do the work. You're going to have to practice. But it's far better to do the work and make an investment in yourself because by the time you learn all this math, you're going to be fully ready to take the GED. But beyond that, you know, you'll be able to do other things as well. Like if you want, you can continue your education by going to college, right? So never get discouraged if you don't know anything. Uh, but the worst thing you could do is not the uh, not really not make the investment or put the work in to be fully ready and then just kind of hope that you can pass uh, the GED math section. That's not going to work out too well for you uh, because a lot of people take the GED and they don't pass uh, primarily because of the math section. It is typically the hardest section for most people, but you can get yourself ready and I'd like to be able to help you. So uh, make sure to check out my full GED math test prep course. Again, you'll find a link to it in the description below. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the GED. Thank you for your time and have a great day.